evening, everyone. My name is Gail Mohen, and I'm the Exhibitions Curator at the Rice and Image Center. On behalf of the RIC, I would like to thank you all for joining us tonight for a conversation between Montreal-based artist Emmanuel Léonard and curator Louise Derry. I would like to start by acknowledging, with respect, the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee peoples and their traditional territory of the dish with one spoon. The Ryerson Image Center stands within this territory today, and we respectfully accept our collective responsibility to the land during a time of environmental upheaval and crisis. Leonard's show is part of the Scotiabank Contact Photography Festival, and it was, it was once again a great honor for us at the RIC to collaborate with Darcy Killeen and the whole team at the festival. Before I introduce the Manuel show, I'd like to mention a few program notes before we begin. We are recording tonight's event and we'll be uploading it onto our YouTube channel in the near future for those who weren't able to attend tonight or for those who would like to watch again. Closed captioning through Zoom webinar has been made available for tonight's audience. After the lecture tonight, we will commence a Q&A. If you have questions throughout the conversation, please use the Q&A function located at the bottom of your screen to submit them. And lastly, in the case of a technical difficulty, please remain patient while we correct the issue. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Emmanuel's exhibition, which is on view on our Sala J. Bashir New Media Wall through December 4, along with three other exhibitions in our galleries and the public installations of the, new, the Scotiabank New Generation Photography Award across the university campus. Montreal-based artist Emmanuel Leonard captured the complex realities of Canada's strategic military imperatives in the far north during a 2018 residency. Deployment, a two-channel video accompanied by photographic portraits, focuses on the passage of time experienced by soldiers posted to the Canadian Arctic, showing everyday moments against an infinite backdrop of snow and northern night, a place where the climate crisis has intensified the national, political, and economic stakes. It is now my privilege to introduce Emmanuel Leonard and Louise Day. Mesdames, c'est à vous. <laughs> what a pleasure Hello. to see you, Emmanuel, uh, for this conversation. So thanks to Gael Morel and the team at uh, the Ryerson Image Center. Um, I feel very privileged to be in your studio, Emmanuel. Thank you for welcoming me. It's you know, pleasure. it's such a more natural context that to be alone on our side on Zoom, because being in a studio with an artist, it's such a natural thing for a curator. Mm -hmm. So maybe we start with uh, a kind of uh, explanation of where we are, where is this studio in Montreal? Thank you, Louise. Uh, hello, every, everyone. <laughs> Um, so you are in my studio in uh, Villeray, which is a, a small area in Montreal. So it's half a house and a place to work. And um, with all of the installation to be able to talk to you through Zoom, because one day we will be able to be in person, which will be great. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it's good to see the place and it's good to see new works, uh, which we can expect we'll have a chance to see in the future. But coming back to deployment, it's a project which has been developed over maybe three years now. And uh, the first thing that I was considering working with you and listening to you and looking at the work is that you're the type of artist really interested in doing research residencies, being immersed in different type of contexts. So it's right, you are liking to travel, to experiment context, to meet with people. Yeah, um, for several work, I was, I'm interested in the type of kind of documentary or um, with a twist, maybe something like that. Uh, so 
I made several work with a group and often group of workers. So um, like the one we can maybe start the video. So if it's possible, thank you. Um, true residency, like in Finland, uh, I work with some uh, young student uh, there up north and um, I work with teenager too. So that's not people in a working space, but type of uh, observing group and the relation with the individual in the group and the notion of yeah hierarchy uh, in that. So for that piece, for example, I was with um, social workers who work in the uh, north of Montreal during the night in a truck, in a kind of, <laughs> kind of a strange truck a little bit. But um, so I was with them for several nights and night and night because they working at night meeting people, being able to uh, give them, uh, well, different things like condom or a screen of, for the crack pipe or uh, just concealing or a coffee, tout mm -hmm. simplement. Mm -hmm. And then I observe these young, beautiful women uh, in this very small uh, space. And I have to be very discreet yeah. to not disturb their work. So that's the type of, um, yeah. Uh, you're, you're entering in, in very human aspects of the groups of individuals. You're working like the nuns or teenagers or security guards, or I remember another project with workers at General Motors uh play mm. uh, play plan plan yes uh but um the north in the far north the arctic uh territory it's very special because you've been there with the canadian forces yeah so can you explain why you've been traveling with a bunch of soldiers in the in the far north yeah maybe we can uh change the um uh the slide please just to introduce uh, uh where we what we're talking about so not this one the one uh, after mm -hmm. yeah thank you thank you very much so uh oh <laughs> i'm just waiting for the yeah this one so that's the the exhibition at ryerson actually so like you say, uh, Louise, I made this piece uh, during a residency with the Canadian uh, force. They have uh, a program of uh, art program and um, artist residency in that program. And so it's open to different type of artists. It can be musician, uh, okay. writer, etc. Mm -hmm. And we, when we apply to that, we have to ask for a specific operation that they will do. And I asked them for Operation Nunalivut. Maybe we can start the video, please. Yeah. Operation Nunalivut. Yeah. So that's the video you will see at Ryerson, actually. It's a diptych. So two video. And um, yes, I think it's 24 minutes around that long. Um, what we see is the departure of the group. So you're yeah. there, we don't see you, but you're there with, with your camera. And it's, we were so excited to see that soldiers were reading books, you remember? <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, and uh, so I, I was with them to Winnipeg to Resolute. So for this operation, um, they do each year around February because it's the coolest month uh, with some light yeah. and it's uh, based on um, Cornwallis Island where is located the city of Resolute which is a city created by the government the Canadian government around the 50. Uh, it was a way to claim 
the Canadian sovereignty over this uh, territory. Um, so, so for doing that, they need to have um, a sedentary population. And well, to in the 50, they took some families from Inuktuak, uh, Nunavik, north of Quebec, and relocated them in uh, Resolute, which was very, very difficult for them because the climate yeah. was different and the um, way of gathering food too. Today in Resolute, there are around 200 people living there. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, this, um, uh, what we see on the video actually, is the preparation of the departure. And I was interested in filming this all this uh, work, the repetition of the same gesture, trying to start the skidoo again and again and again with um, with in this context, uh, this climate context. It was very very cold, so the machinery, of course, was cold, and me and my camera too. <laughs> yeah. Very extreme conditions to work. We, we have to figure that it's not a, a movie crew around you. You're alone, you're there, and you try to, to record the situation in front of you. You observe, you observe through the camera, mm -hmm. uh, but at that moment, you don't see what you're filming exactly. No, yeah, exactly, yeah. I, I cannot, that was difficult to see in the camera. And um, yeah, the, 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 for me, the, the climate and for, for everyone, in fact, was a huge constraint. And um, so we were very linked. I would, each soldier were a pair. So yeah. one have to check on the other. And for me, I was not able to get uh, outside alone uh, because of the cold. And maybe we, no, we will. Uh, maybe we can start the video again. Uh, oh, we? Yeah, yeah, because, uh, Why not? you know, I was just uh, looking at uh, the diptych, uh, video diptych. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's strange because you have produced a kind of decalage between both images it's not exactly at the same level or at the same moment so you bring us to consider the time yeah in, in the work and the time uh, as you told was something very important for example the light of the northern uh, places like that uh, and also the difficulty uh, to uh, find the uh, les repères, so the distance mm -hmm. between things. So time and distance were really difficult. And so it, it looks to me that you try to uh, make us see this décalage, this kind of rupture between the two images, which are not fitting exactly in Together. terms of level, colors, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, maybe we can start the video, the, um, the slide before this one? Je crois qu'il y a un problème. I think this okay. one. Ah, this one. Yes, the notion of having these two images quite similar, film at the, the same moment, but uh, with a little distance, and that's repeating the, um, the presence of the character, I would say. And as long as they are all well, we don't see that in the plane, but the after we'll see that they are all covered with different type of mask, of gear, etc. So they are singular but anonymous yes. at the same time. Yes. And so you can figure out, oh, he's coming back from here to this part of the, the image, but we never know which one it is yeah. in, in kind of sense. And that's an interesting thing to to the uh, link to the army. Yeah. To... This, this is a strategy that you have uh, very often in your work. For example, when you film some nuns in a very old woman in uh, in uh, I don't remember the the, the congregation. Les sœurs grises, uh, grises sisters. Do yeah. we say that in English? Les sœurs grises. You know, we they look all the same, but they are very different 
indiv yeah. individuals. And it's, it's interesting to see how much we face an entity uh, looking at the images, which is the army, but with different strategies and other works that we will see later, uh, you brought us to look at the persons. Uh, and this is very difficult to see because the army, uh, soldiers, it's not a sujet à la mode in a way for an artist, but uh, over that consideration, we really feel some individuals, we meet with real people, even if in the image, we don't see the distinction between them. <laughs> That, but that, what we see is that they are trying to do simple gestures. In fact, you told me that they were doing that kind of, of exercises to be able to survive in very difficult contexts. Because could you imagine an airplane would crash close to Resolute if nobody is able to go and help mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have the expertise, they do not, do, they do not know how to survive. Mm -hmm. It will be terrible and they need help to do that. And it's the Rangers. Yeah. Maybe you we, can explain yeah. who they are. Um, yeah, the Rangers are the Inuit, uh, not only Inuit, but mostly in the North, they are from the Inuit community. Um, to be the first uh, uh, respondent, the first uh, respondent, respondent in, uh, in the Northern case of uh, like you say, a plane accident, and they are at the same time um, showing to the young soldiers some uh, way to act in these in, the, in that uh, specific uh, context. So um, we will see some image uh, later uh, on on that. And uh, just to uh, to add, yeah, like you say, um, it was a, it's strange to think of the artist stuck in a group like that. And where is the the liberty, or where where is the way of getting out of the of the group to have a kind of a um, distant point of view, which was not possible in in that uh, context, um, but. Um, for me, it was an interesting position to be yeah. in the group uh, uh, like that. Uh, first, it's kind of an echo of the of the notion of the army, and um, but uh, at the same time, it was for me a way of, I cannot control the scene. I cannot di direct the people to do uh, giving order stuff like that. No, 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 it's not working like that. I have to wait. I have to observe. And and I have to hope for something a little to detail, happen. a little um, something that is not predictable, yeah. and uh, and that's what like for the 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 social worker to a thing like this little de detail linked to the work, the notion of work, and. Um, uh, we can maybe change to the the next project because you know it will maybe surprise uh, you <laughs> at your um, screens uh, a totally different type of images uh, and uh, you know I was really uh, admirative of Emmanuel able to do the same year in 2018 to uh, very important research residencies, uh, the one in the far north, as we've seen, and this one in Colombia, uh, looking at people moving, <laughs> in that case, salt. A and for me, as the curator, uh, uh, to gather those two body of works was really, really interesting because both of the projects are expressing the idea of deployment, people in the territory doing a certain, doing certain tasks. And in this case, it was as difficult as in the North, but because it was so hot, so warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, you tell us. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was in Colombia for uh, several months, and um, I works 
for that in La Guaira region, which is uh, very far north east of the country, and um, where there is this uh, salt, the salt mine. This one is uh, the, the salt mine of Manor. Which was interesting me was this this eco with the 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 um, this young man working again and again and again repeating the same gesture the 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 labor I don't know in, in English but, but the labor the, yeah. le, le labeur, oui. vraiment, this, um, in that extreme yeah temperature so they they work from five to nine and stop at nine in the morning because it's too warm and then co coming back at the end of, of the day. Um, yeah, they, they, they're and, young and there's all, they're also covered. Sometimes their head is completely covered because of the sun yeah. and the warm. And what, um, yeah, and you, you remember when we discussed about image fix and yeah. image um, in movement. In movement like here in motion because I, I i'm coming from photography i'm at the base uh, uh, of a photographer and then i uh, start to use video for several reasons the the notion of uh, text too and time of course and here it's like so i use video as a photographer often fix yeah. screw fix uh, frame and um and the action coming through the, the, the this fixed image, so you can read the image as you read a photography because there's not so much thing that moves, but here what's moving it's the 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 the, the worker in fact the miner, um, so it's it was presented as a photography, huh? yeah. You remember yeah. in the gallery we yeah. put a frame around. Yes and so you can have the impression of a photographic thing but there is this action that is looping again and again and again mm -hmm. um, yeah so maybe we have to mention that the exhibition that we have uh, showed at the gallery was larger than uh, what is uh, seen at the at the ryerson image center it was, a, I would say, a huge exhibition, one of, one of the biggest exhibition you did with the first catalog. Uh, but uh, yeah, in fact, uh, as a curator, I thought that we have to bring the attention on those uh, very different contexts. Uh, minus 55 in, in Resolute, you mm -hmm. mentioned at that time of the year you were and uh, probably 45 degrees mm -hmm. here, something like that, almost 100 degrees mm -hmm. different difference in uh, both uh, body of works. And so we, we did some strategy to organize the works in the gallery as um, a conversation or a dialogue between fixed images and images in motion. Uh, framing uh, some of the uh, videos like the photos, putting them all together in a gallery, but for the largest uh, big diptych, Operation Nunalivut, we just uh, create, just uh, showed, showed it as a very big installation. Mm -hmm. So in fact, the image is, uh, is seen as a, uh, photo as video and as video installation mm -hmm. and this is something you used to to do but you were having the context to explode the image in a very large size yeah. at the gallery that's great uh, almost as you see at uh, image uh, at uh, the ryerson image center but uh, more uh, anchored into the the ground of the gallery so we were working uh, toward the image, or we were working toward the the, the big Hercule airplane, <laughs> and we were also feeling the sound, which we cannot uh, perform right now because we are talking maybe too much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the sound is a very important component of the of the image. Sometimes it's sound that you take 
You, it's always sound that you take yeah. during the recording. Yeah, for Operation Unami Vote, yes. But it's mostly motors. Yeah, again and again. Because when you don't hear a motor running, you just start to be afraid. <laughs> because you're, yes. you're, you're afraid to be stuck, stuck in the code. You know, you have to have this. Yeah. So it's through the the... The video installation uh, um, a lot. Yeah. Um, maybe we can uh, change the slide just to show uh, one, yeah, one fixed frame of the mm -hmm. salt mine, um, and maybe we can go to the to the um, another moment where I was in the north with the scientists. Yeah, but before we do that, uh, Emmanuel, I'd like to add something. Yeah. You went to Colombia uh, because you were interested in filming also some soldiers working oh, yeah. on the border. We don't have images because it would be too much and too long, but uh, you finally did many uh, uh, projects or photos and videos uh, in the salt mines, but you were also in the mountains yeah. uh, filming also some soldiers, you know, doing almost nothing, you know, like the one in the north, what they do, at, you know, during the day, they, they try to, to start the skidoos. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. And if they are lucky, it, they can start them and so they move a bit and they come back and they don't turn down the motor because it will not start again. So, you know, this question of repetition and very, you know, gestures that could not seem so important strategically because we know that the army is in the north to express some uh, pretension for the national sovereignty mm -hmm. of the territory. But when we look at what is happening there, it's almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So you, you saw something equivalent oh, in uh, Colombia. Yeah, you that, know what I mean? That was the first reason. I, uh, I, that, that, that was something I, I really wanted to do. I tried to be in, to go in a, Mil a small military base in the um, mountain, but very uh, high. Where okay. well, 4,000 meters? Well, no, feet or meters? Uh, meters, I think. Meters high. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and so, but I was not able to have the, the permission. I, we try, we try, we try, but it never works. And I, I'm used to that. I'm used to have. Yeah no as an answer so i have to find another way to 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 get there to get there and i film and as i said before uh, about the this uh, short video that's looping and then it's it at the end it's like an, a fixed image it's the same thing i i find the military base it was very high in the mountain and so i film it going through the fog and oh we saw it and then whoo, disappearing in the fog oh, and I was interested <laughs> there because there was young young soldier pretty young in Colombia um soldier that are based in uh uh there for uh, months months <laughs> yeah exactly and they have to 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 check yeah. to verify to observe through the fog <laughs> and that was uh, and just they don't see anything yeah and there's this kind of paradox that is uh, that was for me interesting but we saw them from the other way i mean uh, yeah. we observed them yeah disappearing they, the fog yeah the they fog. are they were sentinels uh, based there to look at some danger you know this is what soldiers are doing they want yeah. to protect uh, a place like like that, the front, the borders, and but they don't see anything. You know, often, yeah, often. Oh, yeah. So you did a video with this yeah. situation, which is really interesting, and also, uh, which is bringing another type of relation with the 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 snow and the ice in the north, the salt uh, in in the mines, mm. and the 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 white clouds. Yeah. So it was another 
prop propriety of materiality that you were filming, but all the same color or type of atmosphere, mm. uh, which was uh, also for me a uh, very interesting subjects to bring to the public to just look at the nuance mm -hmm. of this materiality because we we see a lot of exhibitions with photos and videos and sometimes we're losing uh the the fact that there is a materiality in front of the the lens and uh, so there is people but there's also a territory materiality and so the, the exhibition was bringing um the, these qualities that we can find in your photos and videos thank but you. i know that you want thank to you. change the slide no i think, I think yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah uh, can, can we change the slide please oh that, that that's uh two portraits that are presented at uh uh, Ryerson, actually. So it's uh, uh, Arrangeur la Nuit. And uh, um, the next one, please. A soldier, too. So that, that was two portraits um, taking that with just this little sign that we are somewhere where there is a house mm -hmm. around. Um, and we can maybe pass to the next slide. Yes, and but I just like to say that people who will see the exhibition at the Ryerson uh, will see the big contrast between the photos, which are portraits, yeah. and the video uh, screens in the screens, uh, which express more the, the the research and the thematic we can say and the context, and this is also a sort of. Uh, dialogue that you we see in your work not only photo versus video but also specific people versus video. their context yeah. and also those photos are absolutely marvelous because we think it's it's kind of light box but it's yeah. not light box it's real light but northern light mm -hmm. and and when we have a chance uh, to see uh, amid other works I know that there's a couple of others later in the presentation. We'll see the different qualities of the light in the north in different blue blues, <laughs> different blues. <laughs> I don't know if we can say that. Uh, so you were also very uh, interested in capturing um, the the, qual the the quality of the light. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is... so now you want to talk about these uh, this triptych this time. Yeah yeah uh, um yeah it was because we talked about uh, the activity in the in the north and that that was part of um the exhibition deployment too it was um three video running uh quote a quote um besides uh, made um took, in fact, two years before with uh, another uh, uh, expedition I, I, I've made with uh, Ocean and Fisheries Canada uh, with a researcher in marine biology. And uh, so what we have is the activities of the different people working in the same place in the same times um, in this context um i wasn't uh interested of having these uh different just gesture or um movement of this group which was the minor of the because the scientist was based in the um, uh, the the facilities of the port of a mine which call which is called uh, the raglan mine and uh, you have the inuit team that were working with the scientists for this research and it it's interesting to to think where like i said before the this idea of the artist um where is the liberty of the yeah. artist and but it's 
was the same with the scientists too, because we were in a small boat and I don't have to disturb them. I don't yeah. have to, to put them, their work in difficulties because, because first it costs very a super cher, a, a lot to, to do this, uh, this ex uh, expedition for them. And they have to be very, very efficient in what they do. Um, mostly the one I, I was working with was uh, looking at the impact of the ballast water. Mm -hmm. Bring by this huge cargo of the mine and from water to south and they put the, the, the water in the north, in this Arctic um, they water, con they contaminate the Arctic. Yeah, and so they, they yeah, it's what the the uh, the scientists try to yeah. observe. In fact, so it take time and time and time, and um, we begin the start with the idea of immersion or collaboration or residency, etc. It's sure that for me. We cannot talk about collaboration with uh, Be between artists and scientists. Yeah, me. between me and the the, the marine biology uh, in the context of North uh, Water, because what can I, you know, bring to them? Yeah, well, so so its notion of time is different because I observe, I const I took material, I, I try to understand what's going on. And I try to don't disturb their work. And the time of art is long, mm -hmm. takes time. Yeah. And it's afterward, uh, I, I grab that and I try to look again and again and again and construct after, uh, after time. Mm -hmm. So it's where the distance occurs. Yes. If then, and same thing with the arm, it's where the distance in that time process of time. Yeah, this is uh, interesting. Uh, it's not rare that we hear uh, how much uh, scientists and artists are sharing uh, the same type of, uh, of process, you know, having a, 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 an idea, wanting to explore something, uh, collecting things. So what bring you what brings you in in the north in this case, uh, for example, uh, it's because you're looking for something. you want a context to observe. And they do the same, but they have a specific uh, protocol to collect uh, simple uh, ice or minerals or things like that. And for you and for them, it's when you're back that the work is starting in a way. Yeah. I think that what you, you say uh, about the fact that it takes time to do art and it takes time to do science yeah. also. And uh, for them, as it is the case for you, um, you are not exactly sure of what you will find and what it will serve in terms of uh, artistic um, results or scientific results. And so I find really interesting that listening to you, what would be the work of a journalist mm -hmm. doing the same kind of trip, accompanying a scientific team exactly at the same place? I know that you have an answer for that. <laughs> no, but it's not the same the plan, goal. The plan. Yeah, it's not the same goal because uh, often if you have to construct a reportage about a subject, you have a plan, you have, you know what you want to get yeah. to, to grab, etc. For me, I, I just, I don't know. You don't know. I, I, I Well, not at the beginning. I tried to have kind of a total uh open mind and, and that's allow me to to well to take a lot of time in uh in the hope that something will happen will happen will something happen. will uh, something maybe very small very like just uh maybe we can look in some picture um can we change the slide thank you so that's another 
think about the the, the triptych uh, video triptych from Sa uh, Salouet Deception Bay. So next one, please. Um, yeah, I have one in particular, but I will show you uh, later on. But I um, I can last a lot of time. Uh, lose, lose. Uh, sorry, lose a lot of time to hope that something appears yeah. and you don't control that. And I don't control that. And I think it's um, it's an interesting way of letting the life or the reality impact. Yeah. More than if I just try to find something. Yeah, I, I preconceive, in fact. So, but sometimes it doesn't work because yeah, nothing happens. But, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but you that's know, that's the game. Finding or not is all. It's always a res uh, a result for a searcher. Yeah. But you know, I remember the day uh, when when we were working together in the studio, trying to organize the exhibition and working on the writings and and lectures and things like uh, what we are doing now. Uh, I was asking at the moment, you know, if we accept the artists traveling in the north, who are the people around that you need? We see, we've seen that there is soldiers, so the army is there, the forces. Mm. We know that the scientists are there, uh, and we know that the mines corporations are there, or private companies uh, trying to extract the resources mm. of the territory. And all those people are connecting for pragmatic reasons, mm. having airports, having roads, material, mm. sharing the resources the, on the place, rangers, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, so you've, you were alone uh, working in both places, Salwit and also Resolut. So did you feel that the artists in, in those contexts are seen like a way to look at what is happening there? Are you uh, a component uh, with, with your artistic vision of all these concepts of development of the North, uh, exploration of the North, are they seeing you like an explorer? Do they? The, 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 uh, the, the people who, who are there, the other sharing one? their airports and roads, and uh, or they don't I, understand. I, well, it, it depends, and, and and there is the 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 Inuit community too that were uh, very present. Uh, uh, well, I was most in, in, in Salwit. Um, I think it's well. It's difficult to know because uh, it's like with the soldier. I was just waiting for days and days in the cold, in the wind, and and and, and they say, well, "What does she filming?" I mean, yeah. we we just do nothing or trying to do something that we uh, not work really. The, well, one one uh, one on two or stuff like that, and and and. Um, it's because of that, because I, um, I have this moment. So, um, yeah, I think the, the notion of being able to lose time or to just observe, and, and it's a way of observing the human yeah. you know, through that. And uh, the way we move, the way we resist, the way we, uh, we act together, uh, stuff like that. So. Yeah, because you were not in a way to observe or uh, uh, document the results. There was yeah, nothing yeah. happening. So finally, one, one aspect which is so important, we've mentioned it before, is that the humans are the real subject yeah. of all these expeditions that you are, you've done in the past and that you want to continue to do. I yeah, think we have other photos, a couple of photos. Oh, it's, it's almost the end. Yeah, we uh, can maybe pass uh, to the next slide. So that's another, it's, um, I don't know how to say that in English, but uh, practical practice, practice. land. Uh, the other one, please. 
Yeah, so uh, ranger with soldier. Um, you explain to me the difference because we cannot uh, really recognize, you know, the way they are dressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah, but often the ranger have this very uh, orange suit, but not here. <laughs> so it's not <laughs> often, often. So uh, the next one, please. Yes, that was in the hangar where they tried to start first time the skidoo. Next one, please. That was uh, la sieste, so um, when we sleep um, <laughs> during the day. So there is somebody inside this coat and um, that's happened often. So uh, next one, and then we can maybe start the... Yeah, the, this, the, yeah the, maybe we can hear a bit. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we can start this one. I made that with the young coming back, with the sound. Oh, living in the cold is definitely different than living down south because every single thing that you touch here is already frozen. So nothing here is warm, nothing here is, is good to touch. So if you touch something without gloves, you freeze your hands right away, you get frostbite. There is not much to touch. La mort, le frost est uh, incroyable. C'est quelque chose que j'ai jamais senti de ma vie. Moins 30, tu penses que ça c'est froid? Moins 60, c'est fou. Ça n'a pas d'allure. Non, it's crazy. It's death. Maybe a curator can say at that point that we can be worried about our artists <laughs> when they are doing such a, a challenging expedition. Uh, I definitely was uh, afraid at first, and then we kept getting like that. The cold weather injury, and they had some nice pictures. And so they definitely become a bit more scared. Got up here, first couple of days was like, oh, it's fine. Then we got on the snowmobiles and went out for the 40 something kilometer trek in one go. And that's definitely the most I was ever scared of losing fingers and stuff. Just being on a snowmobile for that long, it got really cold on the toes and fingers. Okay. Maybe we can stop here. Okay. Thank you so very much, Emmanuel and Louise. Um, so uh, I have a couple of questions um, that I ask now. So this question about uh, actually, um, the Inuit uh, rangers, guides, um, how did they help the soldiers cope with the cold and other things in, in this, uh, you know, place, particular place? Well, they, they uh, accompany the, because they do um, trip and then they, they do camp, etc. And so you, the, the, the ranger was really, really, uh, you, I mean, uh, important in, in that because they create this uh, small uh, tent, very hot. Igloos. So, yeah, but the, the, yeah, the igloos was to, to show how to work, but they, they never uh, sleep in, the, in, okay. in there, in <laughs> fact. So, and uh, so there's this kind of, um, uh, yeah, relation uh, uh, with uh, guiding, in fact. Maybe also, uh, if I can complete, you told me that uh, it's very difficult to get some uh, the repair, uh, uh, guide to, what's the word? Uh, because it's white and you have a big you distance. Signals or... Yeah, you need signals to indicate distance. Evaluation of the distance and the rangers know how to, to read the territory and because soldiers, they could say uh, mm -hmm. it's probably three kilometers, but at the end it's 30 kilometers. Mm -hmm. So the rangers are giving uh, instructions and, and uh, advices to, to navigate in a way on the territory. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. C'est vrai. Oui, oui, oui. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, yeah. Uh, and that <laughs> and, and for the climate too, or the weather. Okay. 
like yeah. oh wow, it's gonna be problematic in two hours there it can you know can they, affect the weather yeah. and, um another question is uh um it's a mix of questions but you often as louise mentioned you often work in closed environment with like groups of people that are really tight together whether it's their nuns or the soldiers um how, how do you um how do they accept you how do you mm -hmm. make their trust how do you make them feel comfortable talking to you because uh, that's what impressed me the most in your work is how you you fit in you are you're so gentle and subtle in the way you approach your subjects um, that I wonder how, how do you make that seem so easy in a way? Mm -hmm. You know, just to ex explain a little bit the process when you enter a community, how do you make them trust you? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know really, but um, first take time takes time yeah uh it depends on on of course I, with the soldier i didn't have the time that it was uh but uh being there but not disturbing um preparation maybe yeah okay. yeah that that coming with not disturbing and uh laughing with them i mean you know be so, spending time basically. yeah yeah and and be i don't know being curious maybe but uh I won't say that but uh, yeah notion of time and uh curiosity i think you've uh, you've you've uh, showed your work to the yeah. young soldiers yeah. the days you were there uh, you gave a lecture in a way to, yeah to yeah but that's really my work my Older Old, work. Older work. No, I, I show them some image I've done because, and yeah, you're right. Because I made the same thing with the, the nuns. I show them some I made before. So they understand what I'm doing with them. Uh, that I'm not going to laugh at. Yeah, at, yeah. at teenagers, stuff like that. So they have to, to see a type of uh, some work. But yeah, I made a, <laughs> a, a, a night with uh, a lot of uh, slides. So they were laughing at each other. <laughs> but, and also probably it's like when we look at your work, people uh, involved must probably realize that it's not staged in a way. It's so natural, so authentic. It's simply the visual facts of what you look at. And probably they, they feel that they will not be manipulated in something which do not belong to her or to their life or to their experience. Hmm. It's complicated because you have to have a certain distance, not to be flattering, you know? And at the same time, not to be bashing. So it's kind of a finding a mixed um, position. I don't know. And uh, maybe uh, the last question, uh, what are you working on right now? <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah, well, uh, tell, tell, tell her. Okay, okay. <laughs> tell her. No, I am mean, interesting in, in the... Um, in the uh, les livreurs, uh, the tip uh, Uber, or you know this type of new work that is totally uh, on, on under the traditional laws of working uh, state. So uh, the delivery food uh, during the pandemic. During the pandemic, during so I, I made picture in the night of the because we are we had a curfew here and i spent night to observe who are in the street during a curfew and i realized well the delivery food guy with his bicycle his trottinette his car so that was very interesting and uh, did you make some videos or just photographs well, i'm working on i made more most photographs 
than video actually. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to knowing more, learning more about this project. Um, thank you so very much, Louise and Emmanuel. It was a pleasure and an honor to have you with us tonight. Thank you all for joining tonight. Uh, please check our website for our operating hours because they've changed. Uh, and uh, we are looking forward to welcoming you in the gallery very soon. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. Merci, Gaëlle. Thank you. Merci, Merci everybody. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.